This video accompanies an article titled The Effect of Distance on the Irradiance and Beam Homogeneity from four LED curing lights. This article shows that a single irradiance value cannot adequately describe the light output from dental curing lights. The study also shows that the irradiance and beam homogeneity from the light are affected by the distance and the choice of curing light. Calibrated beam profiles were recorded from four different curing lights at 2, 4, 6 and 8 mm distances from the end of the curing light. As you can see, these distances are all very clinically relevant. Since dental radiometers have been reported to be inaccurate, this study used an Ocean Optics laboratory grade NIST reference spectral radiometer attached by a fiber optic cable to a 3.9 mm diameter sensor. The diameter of this sensor was very similar to that of a restoration, and thus this study accurately recorded just the irradiance that a restoration would receive and not the irradiance that is delivered to other parts of the tooth or mouth. Table 1 and Figure 3 in the article show how the irradiance falls from each of the four curing lights as the distance between the tip of the curing light and the sensor increases from 1 to 9 millimeters. Note how each light behaves differently as the distance increases and how, for example, the Demi initially delivered a lower irradiance than the Blue Face 69, but beyond 6 millimeters the Demi delivered a greater irradiance than the Blue Phase 69. The fusion curing light delivered the greatest irradiance at all distances and was the only light to still deliver more than 1,000 milliwatts per centimeter squared at the 8 millimeter distance. The article goes on to describe how a spiricum beam profiler was used to show how the distance from the end of the curing light affects the beam profile from the curing light. Here we can see a curing light held up against the target screen of the beam profiler. You can see how the image changes as the distance increases from 0 to 4 millimeters, and then from 4 to 8 millimeters. Here you can see the beam profile when the curing light is 8 millimeters from the screen. This view is the other side of the screen, and immediately you can see that the beam image from this light is quite inhomogeneous. When the beam profiler software processes this information, it produces a calibrated map of the irradiance distribution across the light beam from the curing light. The effect of increasing the distance from 0 to 4 and then out to 8 millimeters can now be clearly observed. This view is of the fusion curing light that was used in the study. Note that at 8 millimeters, the LED array comes into focus. Note also that most of the light output is focused close to the center of the light beam. Figures 4 and 5 in the article summarize the effect of increasing the distance from 2 to 4 and then to 8 millimeters on the beam homogeneity and the irradiance from the four lights tested in the study. As you can see, there is quite a difference in the beam homogeneity and the beam profiles between the four different curing lights. Table 2 in the article shows that the beam homogeneity top hat factor values were not significantly different for the demi and fusion curing lights. However, the top hat factor of the flashlight magna is low and indicates that it has the least homogeneous beam profile of the lights tested in the study. In conclusion, this article shows that the universal practice of using a single irradiance value does not adequately describe the light output from a dental curing light. Beam homogeneity varies significantly among the curing lights used in this study. Depending on the beam homogeneity, deep restorations may not be adequately cured if the curing time is based upon data obtained when the curing light was positioned close to the radiometer or the dental resin. Light curing times may need to be increased for deep restorations when using some curing lights. Longer curing times may require the use of techniques to dissipate heat buildup in the tooth or the gingiva. For more information, Please read the article that is available from the Journal of the Canadian Dental Association website.